Uh, now, keeping up with the running backs, we heard a lot out of Denver. A lot out of Denver. John out, John Fox in. I mean, basically, they, there was either, you know, it was like they hadn't even had Noshan work on a practice field for him yet, and yet they already hated Noshan. I mean, Noshan was done. They already hated him. He was a backup. He's a third down guy. And so I was thinking, I'm like, yeah, I can see them going after D'Angelo Williams. That makes a lot of sense. But on the flip side of that, boy, that sure seems like a lot of talk. Um, you had Page out there routing his mouth as well in the press, Woody Page or whatever. Uh, and then all of a sudden it turned out to be just that. Well, then they said, oh, well, we don't really have the money to sign D'Angelo, some big fat excuse. And then they went out and all they did was sign Willis McGahee. Uh, and then they announced, no, Sean, yeah, he's going to be the starter. So it sounds like this, you know, just a lot of stuff to try to light a fire under no Sean's butt to get him to do something this year. Um, do you see no Sean as a top 20 back? The thing about fantasy football is when, when you're going down that draft board and you say, okay, top 20, um, in a 12-team league, right, there's going to be 12 running – or 24 running backs that are going to start on, on, on all 12 teams. Four. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? And then you got two receivers and you got a flex player, so you can put whatever you want there. So and when you start getting down to that point, you're starting to look at, well, doggone it with the way that NFL plays today, you know, how many number one teams have a guy that's not sharing a lot? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so I don't think Willis McGee is going to take a lot of carries away. No. So, I mean, he might be a true number one. Now – is that a first round pick? No, but is it a late second round pick and and maybe a, a flex player position? Probably, because you're going to get someone who's going to get the ball. Right, right. I think he's a late too. And if you can get him as a flex, that's that's pretty nice value right now in that situation. Um, you know, I mean, listen, Denver's not going to be one of the better teams you would expect. I think that it's going to help No. Sean if they keep Kyle Orton. I really do believe that. I know there's people that, oh, Tebow this and Tebow that. But at the end of the day, that kid's still got a learning curve, and that's going to slow down this offense a bit. Orton is ready to make this offense move right now. And so I want right now, when it comes to keeping the offense moving and keeping that respect in the passing game from the defenses uh, to help Noshawn be able to run the ball and you know, that passing game on the outside, you know, him catching the ball and whatnot. Uh, so I do still hold out hope for Sean. Yeah, he's got to show that he can stay healthier for one. And somehow he's got to show that he can break some plays a little bit better, uh, you know, down the field, 20-plus, you know, type carries and whatnot. Uh, but, uh, you know, yeah, if you can get him as yeah, really a flex, I think would be really nice, you know, depend on what type of league you're in. But I look at him maybe top 25. I'm not really sure I'd put him in the top 20. But obviously his value went up. Again, this is a guy that I've had maybe about the 35th running back. But that was because I was expecting yeah, D'Angelo or somebody a little bit more prominent to come into that situation other than maybe a McGahee. Uh, McGahee, hey, listen, he's on his, you know, this is one of his, probably his final contract of his career. Uh, he is going to pose somewhat of a threat at the goal line. Although, no, Sean, isn't that bad. Yeah. It's not horrible or anything at the, around the goal line. He can find the end zone. Uh, so, you know, with McGahee, he's going to be a presence. He's going to be around, but yeah, no Sean's the starter. He, if he gets going, he's going to get the ball more and more. Uh, Ray Rice didn't have a problem being an effective fantasy option, a top 10 type of guy, uh, having McGahee on his team, even though he did take touchdowns away. And I'd say no Sean, better touchdown guy than Rice straight up. 